Hi, this is Dror Moshe Kasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Like we know, many of us are dealing with very hard challenges in our days. It's not a simple generation, not a simple mission to hold on and to be strong. And especially when our soul, our soul is screaming from within to thirsty for success, for spiritual success, waiting for to, to accomplish big things, to develop, to grow, desiring spiritual experiences and, and to be more attached to, to real sources of of light, of energy, of good. And many of us are trying to connect ourselves and even though finding those things that we thought that will be stable, that will be strong to carry us and to help us stabilize our lives, we're finding them not stable and shaky and, and disappointing. A very important thing, you want to sit? A very important thing I see is that people are struggling with doubts on themselves, have big questions on themselves, finding it hard to recognize who they really are while struggling with sexuality, with finding the right direction in life, to find your, your true potential, in which direction you should work, what you should do, how to really become who you are. In the Zohar Kadosh and the righteous people that had the merit really to go deep into depths of that secret wisdom, they reveal to us many answers that can solve a lot of our issues, but we must remember that the real solution to our deepest questions is not the information itself that we can very easily find, put our, our hands on, the real solution is what we're doing with the information. If we are processing it properly and really learning the lesson from that information that we just learned, or that we just think to ourselves that, okay, that's it, now I found my solution, I found the answer, and keep on falling to the same patterns of our lives, avoiding the real responsibility that is required for us to accomplish tikkun, to fix ourselves. Many people are struggling in that question, who am I? And after years of relationship, of marriage, doubting that relationship and doubting their own sexuality and questioning deep questions about themselves. For an example, a very deep and very meaningful answer to our generation is written in the book of 
Reb Michel from Zlotchov. Reb Michel from Zlotchov was one of the holiest, deepest, most righteous students of the Magid Mimezrich, the Magid from Mezrich. And Magid is a speaker. He was teaching that he was the main student of the Baal Shem Tov, HaKadosh. So we're talking about the first generation to the Hasidut, that is a huge movement in Judaism. 250 years ago, And they were all Mekubalim. They were all very deep into Kabbalah and into secrets of the Torah. They were fasting and they were torturing themselves. Dipping in freezing water, going to breaking the ice and dipping in, in, in the frozen lakes. And for days and weeks and months going in, into the forests all alone, only to meditate and, and to learn with poverty, without considering their own needs, and really sacrificing themselves in, in that way of Hasidut to do more than they are being expected to do. And Reb Michal is writing in his book that there is a question in the Chumash, in the Bible it's written that Yitzchak, Isaac and his wife Rivka both of them were praying to have a child and in one day they both prayed together they went out to pray and Hashem, the Creator, answered the prayer of Yitzchak. That's what it's written. So, many righteous people interpret that situation based on the holiness of Yitzchak as the child of Abraham, of Abraham. And the Gemara is telling us the reason why Yitzchak been answered and not Rivka, they had a child together. Finally they received what that they wanted, but it was by the prayer of Yitzchak and not by the prayer of Rivka. So the main assumption through the ancient generations was that it was because of the merit of Isaac that he was a righteous man, a son of a righteous man, by his merit, the merit of his father, Abram, he been answered and Rivka, even though that she was a righteous woman, because that her father was not righteous, that is the reason why Yitzchak's prayer been answered and not hers. Consumption. Reb Michel from Zlotchow is giving a whole different reason for that situation. And he's saying, Rivka was not the problem. Rivka never had the problem of bringing children to the world. That's why her prayer never been answered. Because she already been answered before she came down to the world. It was obvious Rivka will have children. Her prayers were supposed to be prayers on her husband. He had an issue. He had a problem. Yitzchak. He was the problematic one. What was his problem? Reb Michel from Zlotchov is saying that Yitzchak came down to this world with a feminine soul, with the soul of a woman. And the soul of a woman that is getting married with a woman that has a soul of a woman cannot bring children to the world. So they had to pray for Yitzchak that some part of a soul of a male will get into his soul and that he will not going to be a 100% female soul in a male body. And the book Megid Meisharim that been written 
by Rabbi Yosef Karo, that is the Beit Yosef, that he was a huge Mekubal, that wrote to us the Shulchan Aruch, that all the Jewish rules, Halakha, is based on his wisdom. He had an angel. That that angel was always walking with him and telling him secrets and guiding him in his path. He was a huge Mekubal, a huge righteous man. There is one part in that book, Megid Meisharim, that Rabbi Yosef Karo is telling that while he walked on the beach, busy in his Hid Bodedut, in his prayer, in his heights, his angel was upset on him. Why? Because in one of his steps, while he was walking on the beach, he didn't aim the right combination of the name of the, of the Creator, one of the holy names, properly. So the angel was upset on him. He disappointed his guiding angel because that in one of his footsteps, he didn't make the right intention with the right combination in the holy names of Hashem. Means that we're talking about a person <laughs> that in every footstep, he has a certain intention that's been revealed to him by a holy angel that is guiding him in which combination, which holy names to aim while walking, even while he's talking and praying simply with Hashem. And he himself in his book, Megid Meisharim, is explaining that Yitzchak needed that salvation. The same assumption like Rav Michael from Zlatshov, that the feminine soul married with a feminine soul cannot bring children. Now you can see clearly from that, that people that are coming down to this world with certain struggles can find comfort and answer in those ancient handwrites, in those holy books that will show you that even Yitzchak had his struggles and had his difficulties. Now, what's the problem? The problem is that the information itself, like I said before, is not the cure and the healing to your situation. The question is what you're going to do with that piece of information. Now, you can take that information and to fight and to rebel and to go out and to justify your actions and to say, hey, look, that's who I am. And also Isaac was like me and also it's written in this book and, and you can justify and sell stories to thousands of people to make everyone think that you are the righteous man of the world, the righteous woman of the world and you're doing everything properly even though that you're sinning even though that you're doing something wrong. The question is what you will do with the information. How you'll take that infor information to work on yourself and to heal your spirit and to ask from the Creator to balance your soul and your spirit to a way that will be productive. That good and sweet fruits will come out of you and not your laziness and not your fears will be expressed in your lifetime. Because every person can take every piece of information and go and destroy the world with it. The question and the answer depends only in the real pure intention of your heart. What is your desire? So when we're learning Kabbalah, when we are focusing our mind to the deep learning of the wisdom of secret, we must understand that the main preparation that is needed, and it's a must, and it's required, and without it, it's better to go and throw yourself to secular life with no meaning, just to run after your lust and desires, because at least over there you will not going to spoil as much as a person that with his bare hand is touching the heights, touching and moving the names of angels from one page to the sky. From what that you read in the book, when you start mentioning those holy names, when you read those verses, when those thoughts that contain so much, so high 
and quality and, and, and divine information, when you have the access to this kind of wisdom, it makes you also dangerous in the same potential, in the same level of being also able to make big and wonderful changes in the world. There is a balance and that balance depends in the intention of your heart. So before and from my side, I will, I will, will lift my hand brakes and I will stop in that time. And I will work only on preparing myself for the rest of my life without doing more than that. Unless I will see that Hashem already pushing some things toward me. But from my side, my attitude, my approach to the learning of the wisdom is only to try to clean and cleanse and purify myself as much as I can. And when Hashem will want me to learn and to be educated in that high wisdom, He has His ways. He knows how to do it. He knows exactly how to touch me and how to call me and how to open the right books and how to transfer the information and how to force me to sit with an open book for a few hours and not to move from that book until I'm going to know exactly what he, wanted, what he wanted to teach me. And he can teach me in my dreams and he can teach me in my prayers. And he can teach me from other people in simple conversations, concepts that I wouldn't find out about them myself in thousand years of learning from books. Because the Creator, He knows the ways to our souls. And He knows exactly what is needed for us. So me as a person that is willing to know and to learn, I will work as much as I can on preparing my vessels, on humbling myself, on building my, my soul, my, my spirit, to be a worthy spirit, to hold the Spirit of Hashem, the Light of Hashem, the Divine Spirit of Hashem. Many people that are learning Kabbalah been taught by people that were not, that are not proper to teach, that never meant to teach because their intentions were not honest and simple desires or fears were pushing them toward that position of becoming teachers and tutors for that wisdom and to that wisdom you need to be called from heaven to have the authority to teach and you cannot sit on that throne of honor and to preach other people unless you've been qualified properly. Now, as simple people like us that wants to learn and found ourselves learning from people that were not proper, that were not righteous, that were not holy, many of the if many of the classes of the learnings that we've been taught in a way damaged our way of learning and violated our simplicity and our innocent, us being innocent. They damaged us by teaching us not properly. So we must wake up our senses and to erase those learnings that we've been taught and to try to learn everything from the beginning again like we never learned anything before that's how we need to come to the learning every time we learn like that every time that you come to sit and learn, it's going to be a new learning, a new teaching. From heaven, they're teaching me right now, like the first time that we were standing in front of Mount Sinai, receiving the Torah, the Holy Tablets, and all the information, and all the wisdom, and all the clarity. For an example, The prayer Anna Bechoach. The prayer Anna Bechoach is a very high prayer. 
This is a prayer that holds inside of it a very holy name of the Creator, a name that been transferred from one generation to the next only in writing. No one even whispered that name from a rabbi to his student. Those things only been written. Ancient handwrites been given secretly, quietly, from one to the other. Only after checking for years if that student is proper and holy. And today, we're going to take those sherries on top of the cream, the combinations that been written by Rabbi Chaim Vital, the main student of the Ariya Kadosh, that the Ariya Kadosh testified on the greatness of Rabbi Chaim Vital to be even higher than him. That the Ariya Kadosh is a soul that no one was able even to look at his face from his holiness. A person that lived, if I'm not wrong, seven or eight years in solitary in his own cabin in the desert on the Nile in Egypt, alone with Hashem for eight years after already being a huge and divine soul and learning from the highest and most righteous people in his generation when to clean his heart for eight years all alone on the bank of the Nile, him and the angels, him and Hashem, and after that, finding his student in Tzfat, in Eretz Israel, in the Holy Land, Rabbi Chaim Vital, and telling him, I'm here for you because you are the purpose that I came down to the world for. You are that righteous man. Now, Rabbi Chaim Vital, after being such a holy and humble person, so divine and, and righteous, he's telling us that from that prayer, Ana Bechoach, a prayer that had been written, by Rabbi Nechunia ben Hakana. Rabbi Nechunia ben Hakana was that righteous man that was teaching the wise and most righteous people of his generation, like Yonatan ben Uziel, like Rabbi Akiva, like the prince of Israel in that generation, Rabban Gamliel, like, uh, uh, like Rabbi Shimon ben Shatach, like all those huge ones, like, like, um, like Rabbi Shmael, and huge Tanaim from the first generation, and we're talking about days of the Holy Temple. And in those days of the Holy Temple, they are learning Torah inside the Temple, Bazara, in the yard of, 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 of the Temple. And Rabbi Nechunia ben Hakana, that he was that one that established that prayer, he is whispering and teaching and telling in signs and in hints and in secrets that wisdom to those angels that today we're even scared to stand close by to their tombstones, to their, to their holy graves. That we don't know how to, to pronounce their names from fear from heaven because of their holiness. That they sacrificed themselves and died for the holy name of Hashem. And that they were ready to learn in dedication that we can never imagine. And suffer poverty that cannot be described and even imagined in, 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 in our minds. Lived in a different lifetime. And Rabbi Chaim Vital is taking that prayer and explaining to us in his book, that there is a way to write those words, the words of that prayer, in a certain order that if you will divide it to three parts and put one part on top of the other, you can bring out from that prayer an inner intention that been written and told to us by Nechunia ben Akana, Rabbi Nechunia ben Akana, and it's holding holy names of angels of Hashem in Barach. Servants that made out of holy fire. Ones that we cannot understand their holiness. Now today, this prayer, those names of those angels, can be printed on regular paper, newspapers, on blanks, and just stickers, and, and being distributed in the world, and be included on, on bumper stickers, on cars, on stores that, that can sell products that are not allowed to be sell 
in darkness, in caves, in dungeons. You're not allowed to talk about those things. And those holy names of holy angels will be over there in the same place. Now, to go and remove those stickers, not to give out those prayers, not to tell the names of the angels, I'm not into what you will do. You should do whatever you feel like doing. You should think with yourself what is the right thing to do and to do. But know for sure that you are playing with fire. You are playing with fire. Because to take that sherry that is on top of the cream from the wisdom of Rabbi Chaim Vital and to think that today for you it's a deck of cards that you can play with and say those names and just like pass them around between your friends to make money, it's not the right intention. That's not the intention of that author. That's not why those holy names been transferred in whisper from one generation to the next by holy people that were isolating themselves from the outside external world for that intention that those pieces of, of quality information, diamonds of Hashem, will not going to be disgraced, will not going to be humiliated, will not going to come out to the space without the right preparation. So now that it's out there, it's not our job to go out and collect those sparks. We still don't know what Hashem is doing. We still don't understand and don't know what Hashem, for which reason and for what purpose Hashem made those bumper stickers and why Hashem distributed all those names and the angels are out there in the heart of Manhattan. And Hashem got His reasons. But when we are coming to learn that secret, when we are willing to learn what Hashem, the Creator, wants from us, we need to work as hard as we can to qualify ourselves to be proper vessels to contain the bounty. This is the main lesson that I can teach you about Kabbalah. That you will make yourself a vessel to receive for a purpose and not for your own pleasure and not for your own satisfaction. That you will learn how to receive with the intention to give. That you will understand that the reason why you received something in the first place is not that that bounty will sit and, and plant roots inside of you. It's that you will share that bounty with all your surroundings and to every one of them the amount that is needed for him. And for that you need to purify yourself and your will and your intention that the Creator will use you wisely. That the Creator will use you to do only good. Now for that the Creator gave us our senses, our senses and our feelings, our thoughts. And we cannot ignore our own thoughts and our own feelings. If you feel wrong doing something, you must pull yourself strongly out of that place. If you find yourself that you're getting too arrogant, that you're getting too selfish, that you enjoy something too much, that you are, 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 are going out of, of, of balance in a way, you must be aware to those feelings and to rebalance yourself and to heal yourself and to protect your surrounding from your evil inclination that might hurt you and might hurt them as well. So for an example, if we know that that prayer, Ana Bechoach, is such a holy prayer, and we know that Rabbi Chaim Vital, that huge righteous man, taught us a secret, that in a certain combination of that prayer you can realize, you can understand the, the certain names of holy angels, servants of Hashem. Wonderful thing. Do you know how to use those names properly? Do you know that you know how to mention and pronounce those names in a way that will be blessed, that will really affect positive energy down to the world only, won't damage no one, 
won't violate nothing. Do you know that? If you know that, go for that. Go for it. No fear. If you know that you know, go. I believe in you too. But if you know that you don't have a clue, so don't do that. And it doesn't mean that you cannot do. Why? Because for an example, in the same prayer of Anna Bechoach, that Rabbi Chaim Vital told us, you're right, there are holy names of holy angels written inside of it. And it's amazing. You don't have to pronounce them. You can connect yourself to that prayer by learning it, by praying it, by singing it. Singing the words of the prayer that been established for us to pray on daily basis in Shacharit, in our daily prayer. Every day you should say, Ana bechoach gedulat yeminecha tatir tzerura. For me, it's enough. Now, if I want to learn more and to go to the depths on it, I want to find out more, I can do that. It's allowed to open a book and to read. To go to the depths of that wisdom. But to think to yourself that you can also now try to take it out and start doing whatever with it, it's not so proper, it's not so true that you are qualified for that. Check yourself again. And if you will find yourself that you're trying to achieve certain things that are higher than your level, not being humble while using the crown of Hashem, the diamonds of Hashem. So don't do that because you're damaging mainly yourself. Because if, for an example, a person now, a poor guy, is walking in the market and he's hungry and he's stealing an apple from a store, it's not right. It's not right. Even if you're hungry and even if you're poor and even if you don't have no source of income, and you cannot afford yourself an apple, to steal an apple is not right. For an example, you can go and ask, hey, I'm starving, I'm homeless, I'm hungry, I don't know what to do with myself, and I'm starving, please, can you give me an apple? One of them will give you the apple. You'll find your apple. But to choose for yourself a different way, a foreign way, to go and steal the apple, is showing that you're arrogant, that you're selfish, that you choose not to be caught in your poverty, not to be ashamed for your poverty, and you rather to steal. So that thief, even though that he is poor, he will be punished. The seller will slap him, someone will curse him, something will happen to him. But I'm asking you, let's say that that same poor person found himself in a huge meal that had been prepared for the king. The king himself invited all the poor and all of his people to, to the meal for a fantastic reason, a wedding of his child, whatever. There is a huge feast, everyone are welcome. And that poor guy is starving. And he's walking between the tables and it's not the time of the meal yet. If he will wait another 10 minutes, he can eat with everyone. But he is really starving. And he will find himself stealing the same apple, a red, clean, bright, beautiful, fresh one, but from the main fruit jar of the king's table himself. What will happen to him? The guards that are protecting the king's table, what they will do with that thief? Will it be the same punishment that he could have been punished in the market? Or that it's worse to steal from the king? If now you're lying some lie to a person that you don't know, is it the same level of like lying to your partner in life, to your wife, to your husband, to your child, to your parent? It's not the same. It's not good to lie in no case, in no situation. But when you lie to your wife, when you lie to your husband, there is more negative energy in it 
because you are being expected for more loyalty in a deep and complex relationship. So the violation of lying will pull, will bring worst consequences and punishments, judgments and decrees on a person that will lie in the heights, that will lie when the relationship is under much more commitment, more holy, more pure. So when we now want to learn and we want to learn the secrets of the wisdom, the inner wisdom of all wisdoms, Pnimiyuta Torah, the inside of the Torah that has been given to us by fire from heaven, we cannot allow ourselves to lie in that place. Because the punishment, the judgments, the results will be much more severe than if we would just be who we are in Miami Beach. It wouldn't be the same. Because now when you're close to the king and to his wisdom, you're disgracing him by acting not properly. And this is why I am putting all my effort on working on myself to clean and purify myself as much as I can and to beg to my beloved Creator to help me to be that worthy vessel to contain his wisdom and to share it. So for me, if I don't know that I can use those holy names, I will rather not to use them. And I will not let my desire for holiness, so to speak, we're calling it like in the, in the, in the like judging ourselves wildly favorably, desire for truth. It's not desire for truth. It's desire for success, it's desire for pleasure, spiritual pleasure, okay. It's still a desire, it's still a lust. I will not gonna let that desire that is flaming inside of me to fail me into disgracing Hashem, hurting Hashem's names. So I will rather to take the same thing, the prayer of Anna Bechoach, and to use it properly, like that I've been taught that it's allow and permit for me to use. I will sing it to Hashem as many times as I want because I'm allowed to. I will call it to Hashem in His names without pronouncing them just by knowing that Rabbi Chaim Vital told us that there are names of Hashem written inside of it but I won't mention them, I'm just going to simply pray the prayer. I will ask, Anna, please, by the power of the greatness of your right side, of your right hand, unleash all those ones that are in prisons, that are in, in, in captive, that, that, uh, that are still in chains. I will pray. I will say what that I have been taught that is my part in that game. And again, and I'm not going to stop myself from cleaning myself and preparing myself to the next level. But as long as I still don't know for sure that I'm qualified, I won't do that. I will learn the names. I will look at the names. I will be happy to have them. I will carry them in my pocket. I will do whatever I feel that is still allowed for me to do. But I will not let my evil inclination drag me out of the borders of holiness to the twilight zones. That in those places, darkness and light are playing together. And it's hard to define. And it's hard to recognize. I will protect myself and protect my beloved ones by acting properly and with humility. And will try to know my real level and to play according to it. And it's not 
a small amount. When Haman Arasha, that evil man that wanted to kill Mordechai, a Yehudi, he, when he was about to fail completely and to be punished on his cruelty and on his arrogance, he sat with his family, with his wife and his ministers, all of his children and his advisors, and he was telling them how much money he has and how many children and how he's honored and respected. And after telling all of his wealth and mentioning and counting all of his treasures to everyone, he's saying and all of that is not worthy for me, it's not enough. When I see that Mordechai, that Jew, is not bowing to me. Now you have everything that no one ever dreamt of a position like yours before because no one ever had something like you now have. And it's not enough for you. It's showing on the bad midot, on the bad manners, bad attributes of that evil man of Haman al-Rasha, that he was so evil, that we cannot call him Haman without saying Haman al-Rasha, that he was evil. We're mentioning his evilty, his horrible character, every time we mention his name, because he was so mean. Now when, when we are standing in the place that we feel that something is not enough for us, it needs to turn on a light bulb for us. Why are you saying that it's not enough? I want to say the names of the angels. Why? Why in the world to sing to Hashem and really to aim your heart in simple prayer to Hashem is not enough for you. To learn the wisdom you can learn. To use it, you should use it only when you have the proper vessels, the proper tools to use it to know what you're doing with it. The fact that you're a doctor doesn't give you permission to go and to cut everyone and to spread out medications to everyone corresponding to your free will. The fact that you're a doctor doesn't allow you to go and cut people. And when you don't know what will be the results of your actions, that's when you must stop yourself from acting. Because you might damage people in different houses, in different synagogues, in different lands, and you don't know what you're doing. So as long as you don't know, it's better to sit and not to do. And if in that place you feel ashamed and rejected and hurt and you want to achieve more, so it means that you're arrogant. It means that you don't un understand, you don't appreciate the greatness of the gifts that you already received. And it's saying, basically, that you're not using what that you have. Because you feel so poor and you're not. Because with what that we received already until today, there are so many things that we can do and we can straight our hearts to Hashem and to stand in prayer and to connect ourselves to Him in learning in such high levels, even today, being who we are, without naming angels, without making high combinations, without doing things out the border of holiness and what it is permitted, that if we don't feel that wealth, that bounty that we have, it means that we're not even using what that we received. So when you're not even using what that you received already, and you already want to go out to collect more, something is very wrong with you. Something is very wrong. You haven't even enjoyed your treasures and you're going to seek in different fields. You have a house, you have a huge backyard, and you're not touching it and you're after other properties. Hey, sit down quietly in your living room. Enjoy life. Play. Talk. Learn. Before of running outside of your border. And when we're talking on the spiritual field, 
it's much worse. Because here you can damage a spiritual house. Here you can damage your spiritual family. Here you can damage names of angels that are in charge on, on different things in the world that is much wider than your understanding. And that's why you need to pick up your brain from the arrogant and from the selfish will to enjoy and to succeed and to grow. And just to enjoy what that is already served to you. And there is so much. By going with simple prayers, like Ana Bechoach, like that it's written. By going with simple prayer, like, for an example, what that's written for us in Kriyat Shema, that we're saying Kriyat Shema before we go to sleep. We're saying, B'Shem Adonai Eloi Israel, Mimini Michael, Mismoli Gavriel, Milfanai Oriel, Mechorai Rafael. We're mentioning the name of Hashem and we're saying, by the name of Hashem, from my right side, the angel that we're allowed to use and say his name, Mimini Michael, the angel Michael, that's the angel to our right. Mismoli Gavriel, from my left side, here another angel that we're allowed to pronounce his name and to mention his name. And we don't need to be holy and pure. We love. It's okay. You can say Gabriel, this angel to my left. Milfanai, Oriel, Machorai, Raphael. In front of me, the angel Oriel. Behind me, the angel Raphael. Al Roshi, and above my head, Shchinat El, the Spirit of God. You can say that. It's not enough for you. <laughs> what else you want to say? Go with that prayer. I'm inviting you. I'm calling you. Sit for 10 minutes alone in your room. Quietly, calmly, air conditioned. Sit after you ate and you relaxed, after you napped and you woke up. Wash your hands. Sit. Say those words of that simple prayer. B'Shem Adonai Eloi Yisrael Mimini Michael, Mismoli Gavriel, Milfanai Oriel, Machorai Rafael, Ve'al Roshi Shchinat El. Say that over and over, and over and over, for 10 minutes. Read it. You need it in English? Write it for yourself in English. Find someone that will invest like stupid me, to invest his time for you, to write everything you want me to write for you in English. I'll do that for you probably today or tomorrow. No worry, we're going to advertise that on our Facebook pages. You're going to find it on our YouTube. It will be on our website. No worries, it will send it to you. <laughs> Say that! <laughs> Say that! Say that for 10 minutes. The result of those 10 minutes will be something that you wouldn't achieve in the world by calling the names of Hashem and saying this and that and imagine to yourself that you're holding the heights and calling the angels because all of that is an imagination and doesn't have no connection to reality and to the real will of Hashem that you will be connected like if you will call Hashem in truth that you will pray simple prayers that have been established for you and are not empty at all and are very rich and contain so much, much more than we know, much more than we can achieve. Mentioning the names of those angels, calling Hashem and saying that in the name of Hashem, and you're allowed to call Hashem because it's a prayer that in the name of Hashem been established for us to read. So you can read it and read it. It's not a blessing that you're not allowed to say twice or three times. It's a prayer. It's a verse like a verse in Tehillim. Ana Adonai Yoshiana. You're allowed to say that as many times as you want. Try to say that verse for 20 times, for 10 minutes. Don't go to the places that are forbidden, that are not allowed for you to go. Stay where you're allowed to, but focus and set your mind to holy work and meditate. And really connect yourself to the work that you allow and welcome and invited to work. And the results and, 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 and the reward will be enormous. You can never imagine the spiritual development that you will experience after connecting yourself to Hashem from a sincere and honest and humble place. It's the highest. feels lowest. 
Also Mount Sinai felt the lowest. And then he received the Torah. You will receive the Torah. You will feel the lowest and you will get the highest. Okay? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.